In this video, we're going to look at solving some very basic quadratic equations. Let's start off by looking at what a quadratic equation is. If we have an equation where the highest power of the unknown is a square term, we say it's quadratic. An example might be 2x squared is equal to 34. This is a quadratic equation as we have x squared. We might have 3p squared plus p minus 1 is equal to 0. Again, this is a quadratic equation because we've got the highest power of p as p squared. If we just, for example, had 3p plus 1 is equal to 11, this would be a linear equation as we've got now the power of 1 as the highest power. If, for example, I had 3x cubed plus 5x squared, plus 2x plus 1 was equal to 0. This would be a cubic equation as the highest power of the unknown, which is x in this case, is to the power of 3. In this video, we're going to look at some very basic quadratic equations that we can solve by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. So let's start off. Let's just take now a square. So all I'm going to do is take a square and I'm going to put on some dimensions. So if we have now, for example, this is 5 centimetres and we've got 5 centimetres, we know that the area is going to be 5 times by 5. So it's going to be 5 times by 5, which is going to give me 25, and in this case, centimetres squared. Let's now say I had a different square, and we had now that the side lengths on this particular square were x. So we had x centimetres or x metres. If we look at this now, the area is going to be equal to x multiplied by x, or we could just say x squared. So let's go ahead and say that the area of this particular square was going to be 36. So what we could say is that x squared will be equal to 36. This is an example of a quadratic equation. Now, you're probably already shouting out the answer. Quite clearly, the answer is going to be 6. 2 of the same number that multiply to give 36 give us now x squared is 36, so that number is 6. We just need to be careful. When we've got a quadratic equation, we have a plus or minus answer. So to solve this equation, all we're going to do is square root both sides of the equation. Square rooting is the inverse, or it undoes the square. So what I'm going to say is x is going to be equal to and the notation we use is plus or minus the square root of 36. So x is going to be equal to plus or minus 6. Now, in this case, clearly x isn't going to be minus or negative 6 as it's a length. So sometimes when we solve a quadratic equation, the algebra works, but in reality, the numbers don't often work. So it would be the positive version. And you're probably thinking, well, where does this negative 6 come from? Well, if I had negative 6, or minus 6, and I multiplied it by negative 6, that would give us positive 36. So when we take the square root of 36, that's going to give us now either plus or minus 6. So that's a nice, straightforward quadratic equation. This is the easiest way to deal with them. So let's say we had now p squared, and p is our variable, or our unknown, p squared was equal to 49. We take the square root of both sides, and we can say that p is equal to plus or minus the square root of 49, and that would give us now p is equal to plus or minus 7. So remember, this is the same number. Let's do another one. Let's say this time we're going to have 2, and we'll have 2y squared, is going to be equal to 50. So I want to solve for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides of this equation by 2. So if I do that, I'm going to have y squared will be equal to 50 divided by 2, which is 25. And now I'm going to square root both sides of the equation. So that's just going to give me y. And then I have plus or minus the square root of 25 which is going to give me y is equal to plus 
or minus 5. So that's solving the most straightforward quadratic equations by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Let's now push it out and do something slightly more challenging. Let's say we have now, and we will say that we've got, and we'll have now, uh, and we'll go for 3x squared, and then we will do now minus 1 is going to be equal to, and we'll go for 26. So we want to solve for x. So as we would have done with any other equation, we add 1 to both sides of this equation. So adding 1, we can say now that 3x squared is equal to 26 plus 1, which is 27. I'm now going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So dividing by 3, that's going to give me x squared is equal to 9. We're now going to take the square root of both sides, and that will give me now that x is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. And we can see that x is going to be equal to plus or minus 3. So square root of 9 gives us now plus or minus 3 as our answer. So these are standard quadratic equations that we can solve by taking the square root of both sides. Do remember, sometimes your answer won't always be valid, especially if it's now in context. So sometimes negative answers or even positive answers are not appropriate. So for example, now if we were looking at this, it might be a, a length here and we might take the positive. Now these have all worked out to be nice, what we call integer or whole number answers. It's not always going to be the case. So for example, now if we had 2x squared is going to be equal to 40, we would divide both sides by 2. So dividing both sides by 2, that gives us that x squared is equal to 20. Now, sometimes students at this point say divide both sides by 2. Square rooting isn't dividing by 2. The square root now, so we're going to take the square root, the square root of both sides is going to give us plus or minus the root of 20. If you've done any work with what we call thirds, you might want to simplify this. Otherwise, this would be our answer. I will just put it in the third form as stated. Um, you don't always have to know this, but we could look at that and that will give us 2 root 5. Now on a calculator, if we went ahead and did that, if we took the square root of 20, it's going to simplify it for me to 2 root 5. That gives me 4.472 and so on and so forth. So if I wanted to give my answer to one decimal place, 4.5 and that would be plus or minus. All it's saying is if we multiply this number right here by itself, we're going to end up with 20. If you wanted to look at this, and I think it's important that we do this now, we could go ahead and draw the graph of y is equal to x squared. So if you're still not 100% happy with the idea that there's a plus or minus answer, the graph of y is equal to x squared looks something like this. So this is what we call a parabola, it's symmetric about the y-axis, and it'll look something like that. So this is now uh, y is equal to x squared. So if we think about it, we're going to have naught, naught. If I've got this point just here, 1, if x is 1, 1 squared gives me 1. We've also got this point just here, which is negative 1. Negative 1 squared also gives me 1. So we can see this is symmetric. If I take x is equal to 2, we'll get 4. 2 squared is 4. So here's x and here is y. If I take negative 2 or minus 2 and square that, I'm going to get positive 4. So we can see that this is symmetric. So basic, straightforward quadratic equations by taking the square root of both sides. So let's go ahead and do another one. Let's get up a triangle. So let's have a triangle. Um, and what we'll do, we'll put this on. We'll say that this length is going to be, now uh, we'll go for uh, four, and then we'll say that this one is gonna be five, and these will be meters. And what we want to do is find this value right here, and this is y. So using Pythagoras, we can say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So the two shorter sides, five squared, plus 4 squared is equal 
to y squared. So we've got a quadratic equation here and that's going to give me 25 plus 16 is equal to y squared. So we can say that 41 is equal to y squared and now we take the square root of both sides. So we say plus or minus the square root of 41 is equal to y. Clearly in this case it's going to be the positive root because it's a length. So in the calculator we could find that and it gives us now the positive square root of 41. We can say 6.4 and that's correct to one decimal place. So we can say now that it will be the positive root and it will be now uh, 6.4 and that's going to be now to one decimal place. So 6.4 metres. I'm just writing this in. So that's how we could use a quadratic equation. In the next few videos, we'll be building up the skills we need to use when they're not that straightforward. So these are the most basic cases. In the next few videos, we will look at some more challenging ones. The take home message is that the inverse of squaring something is the square root and you're going to have a plus or minus answer. You solve these as you would any other equation until you get to this step, then you need to take the square root of both sides.